Gabe, welcome to the Haven Report podcast. Happy you came here. It's your last day in the area. We're going to get to that. Yeah. The price of Bitcoin is $65.4 US thousand dollars. And the most recent halving was on 420 of this year, 2024. What's going on with Bitcoin right now, man? Are these uh, gains underwhelming for people right now? <laughs> yeah, man. You know, it's pretty funny. I think uh, I've been pretty annoyed with the Bitcoin price over the past, I would say, a few months. Um, really? Just because it's been like chopping, right? Um, obviously, you got the little pump, but we're not back up to that 70s uh, that we saw a little while ago. So, um, but then you think back to, you know, we're probably like, what, 50% uh, up year to date. So, um, and then further to that, you kind of go back to the price doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, who actually cares? Uh, right. This is a, a long term play and we're in it for freedom. Go up, not yeah. number go up, depending on who you are. Yeah. Well, I can tell you who cares. Short term holders, mm -hmm. people that think it's going to go up real quick yeah. and uh, and dump it. Not guys like you and I, not the hardcore people that are going to be in here for yeah. uh, havings to come and, <laughs> right. and forever. Right. That totally get Bitcoin, I, I would say. Yeah. So. Uh, what what are, what are we looking like? Are, do you expect uh, price appreciation a lot this this term? Do you have some wildest bull predictions like we've heard, or are you uh, more modest when it comes to that? Oh man, I I don't really like making price predictions. Yeah, just because I don't know, it doesn't really matter to me. I just mm -hmm. know that the price is going to go up. Yeah. Um, as a scarce asset uh, has more demand for it, uh, obviously with Wall Street coming in, you know, all around the world, people see the the value in this digital asset. Um. I wouldn't be surprised if we hit 200K uh, US next year. So okay. that's my base case. I would say uh, worst case scenario, 150. Okay. Uh, yeah. And would that satisfy Would that satisfy the masses, the Bitcoin holders, you think? Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care. I just, yeah. uh, I want to make sure that, you know, the people that get in this cycle, um, that they have a learning journey that isn't just about price. So I think we all get attracted to the price when we first get into Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. That's why we get into it, you know, huge fiat gains. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's like, how quickly can you learn about what more there is to Bitcoin aside from those fiat gains, right? And, and some people will just trade it, sell it at the top or try to time the top mm -hmm. and then uh, never look at Bitcoin again. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, you learn about it and you, you go deeper down the rabbit hole. It's a never ending yeah. Rabbit hole with Bitcoin. It's crazy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I certainly don't like to fixate on price either, but we got to, you know, we have to entertain the people here, the, <laughs> the, 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 the short term people that come for in sure. and just want to see what's this, who's this Gabe guy and what's he think Bitcoin's going to. So there we did yeah. that for the folks there. Do you mind showing us your logo there on your on your oh. shirt? Bitcoin advisors. Do you mind telling us about Bitcoin advisors and your role, role with them? Yeah. So uh, actually, Bitcoin advisors is my own company. Um, I started it in 20. Like in January of this year, um, after visiting El Salvador multiple times, I came back to Canada and I thought, you know, Bitcoin is really important. We've got a uh, country that's already making it legal tender. Um, how do we educate people about this? Right. And uh, I come from a financial um, advisor background. So uh, I decided to leave that position in December of 2023 and immediately start this Bitcoin consulting company where I'm a Bitcoin advisor, um, but I don't hold people's money on like financial advisors, right? It's uh, in that traditional finance industry. It's very much, hey, trust me, give me your money. I'll invest it properly for you. Whereas in Bitcoin advising, um, which I spend a lot of time doing now, it's more of, hey, this is a really important thing that you should learn about. Take some time with me and I can guide you through this rabbit hole, right? Um, when I learned about Bitcoin, it was a lot of BTC sessions, hours and hours on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's free information, but some people need that handhold, um, experience, right? Um, and I, I relate it always back to when I used to work at Best Buy and I found it so easy to sell people a phone and tell them, Hey, you can set this up at home, right? I think we've all set up an iPhone, uh, or an Android phone. And we know how easy it is uh, if you live in the digital age and you're good with phones. But when you get older, these people would pay 40 bucks for me to tap a few buttons on their phone and transfer information from here to there, right? So I immediately saw, okay, some people need that guiding uh, hand for something that 
to others seems so easy, right? So um, yeah, that's what I spend a lot of my time doing. And now I signed on with uh, The Bitcoin Advisor, which is a company out of Australia um, that focuses on collaborative multi-sig uh, or collaborative custody to help people solve uh, the need for inheritance planning, mm -hmm. but also uh, remove yourself as a single point of failure uh, mm -hmm. when we're looking at um, Bitcoin, right? When you have a 12 or a 24 seed phrase um, uh, wallet, you are the single point of failure, right? So how do you remove yourself as a single point of failure? You look at something like a multi-sig. Mm -hmm. um, but if you set up your own multi-sig and don't distribute the keys properly, you are still that single point of failure. It doesn't matter how many keys mm -hmm. exist in the vault, mm -hmm. right? So that's where we come in uh, as the Bitcoin advisor together with Bitcoin advisors uh, to, to help you plan yeah. for that. Yeah, I almost feel like you guys need to somehow like connect your names there and just have like one <laughs> one just big yeah. collaboration there. Uh, hey, if they want to acquire me, the, <laughs> the price is 15 Bitcoin. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Seems like a fair deal. Or sure. maybe maybe you're selling yourself short there. Maybe, maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's, those, those are really good points. And you're right. A lot of people do need that, that handheld as they get into this space. We are, you know, I'm... You know, one of the first generation to grow up with with the internet. You know, it's uh, a lot of older older people still don't use the internet we have in our world. And right. you know, Bitcoin's coming into the mainstream. We're seeing you know main uh, big funds, large investment funds in the world get involved with Bitcoin. You know, they're uh, inevitably going to have some sort sort of exposure to it. So yep. they need to understand it. You know, now that maybe exists in the legacy world, maybe it's a, just a Bitcoin ETF. But as you and I know. Uh, Bitcoin self custody is the revolution, right? 100%. So, uh, anyways, you have uh, a cold card, which we're talking about self custody right now. Oh yeah, you brought that. Do you mind showing I the did. camera uh, that that device and why you chose that? Oh yeah. So, um, you know, I think Bitcoin self custody is extremely important. I love. Uh, I I don't buy and upgrade my phone anymore. I kind of just upgrade hardware devices because I just have to play with every one. Um, to ensure that I'm delivering the proper advice for each situation, right? So, um, you know, when we talk, think about self-custody, uh, cold card is highly regarded as the best in the business in terms of security. Um, they just released the new Q, which looks like a uh, BlackBerry. Like the, the buttons and stuff is super it does. cool. Um, it's got a scanner up at the top that you can use to uh, scan QR codes. And then it's got a massive screen um, to show QR codes mm -hmm. to uh, whatever wallet software you're using, or you can go back to the SD card that is very commonplace for people that are used to the Mark IV, which is a little cal calculator okay. uh, from before. It sort of looks like a Game Boy as well. Like oh. screen, uh, One of my favorite things here is that uh, it literally says ECC calculator. So that if you're going through TSA or something, uh, you can literally just point to that and say, this is just a calculator, right? Or right. something like that. I don't know if the yeah. K4 has that. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder, like, has anybody had any issues, like, traveling with hardware wallets? From, no one's really, I've never heard anything, never really seen anything on Twitter about that. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, a, you know, you, they could take the device because as long as they don't have your pin or your f uh, phrase, you can't really get that key. So the device is useless to them without your knowledge with it. Still, you'd want to get that out of there as soon as possible uh, if they if somebody were to confiscate 100%. that. But uh, no, I, I, and I also like what you're doing with the uh, multi-sig uh, with the Bitcoin advisor. Right. With the Bitcoin advisor, because yeah. that's something, you know, you always think like levels of security. Okay, now I got cold storage. Okay, now I've, you know, distributed my keys or have them safeguarded. Now, say, what's next? Oh, okay, now I'm a single point of failure. Like, you just keep go going deeper and deeper in those levels of security. And that's what I do love about the Bitcoin Maxi community is that it's all about security um, and, and focusing on that rather than, you know, buying every little shit coin that's on the market. Uh, 100%. And, yeah. and, and it's not even enough to just no. say buy more Bitcoin, right? What's the point of buying more Bitcoin if your security isn't up to where it should be yeah. uh, for you to be able to, you know, sleep at night comfortably mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. know that you're going to pass it down to your inheritors or that you're mm -hmm. never going to lose that Bitcoin. Um, you know, there's no point, right? If you're just buying and putting exactly. a lot of your time and energy into this mm -hmm. asset, but you're leaving it on an exchange mm -hmm. or you're leaving it on an unsecure hot wallet, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know if like the ETF Bitcoin, the Bitcoin that they supposedly have, like, is that, are those addresses publicly known? Uh, how do they secure their Bitcoin? Like to me, that's a, there's a big fear there for me is that like, you know, what, what if these uh, are just going to be another big exchange going down, except now we're talking about the biggest investment firms in the world, not having Bitcoin to, to give people that want to actually have that Bitcoin. hundred percent. Yeah. I don't think, um, you know, the, the fear factor there isn't necessarily that the, uh, exchange yeah. is going to go down like the, uh, you know, like an FTX where they're yeah. literally stealing money. Um, but I think the biggest risk there is that the government is going to coerce them to actually, right. uh, never release the Bitcoin mm-hmm. <laughs> to the holders. Um, in terms of who has the keys, uh, Fidelity, I know they've had a digital asset branch, uh, and they've been mining Bitcoin since 2014. So I'm pretty sure that they custody their own Bitcoin. Um, and then BlackRock uses uh, Coinbase as a custodian and okay. a lot of other ETF issuers do the same. Uh, so Coinbase, <laughs> you know, Coinbase is a massive uh, problem, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, in terms of be, the addresses being public and do we know if they actually own the asset? Um, I think only a few issuers have made that public. Uh, bitwise, I want to say, being one of those okay. uh, that has made their addresses public. Mm-hmm, Maybe mm-hmm. Van Eck also. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, if that were me, I'd be going with those companies. If I were going to own the ETF, I'd be going with at least those companies where you there's some sort of trail you know who's doing it. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, like I, I, don't, I don't want my Bitcoin. Yeah, with. like if you ask me um, who would I trust in terms of ETFs, uh, yeah, we go back to no one. But if right. you really, really have to <laughs> buy an ETF... Uh, For some reason, you know, in Canada, we have locked in retirement accounts that you literally cannot uh, take money out of. Um, You know, you can buy an ETF and I would say Fidelity is the best uh, in that in the business for that because they manage uh, their own keys and they are not, you know, passing along that responsibility to an exchange like Coinbase. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't know what the fuck Coinbase is going to do, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Well, and and like you said, it's not not necessarily what they're going to do but you know government overreach yeah uh you know, that, that's a huge concern yeah, 6102 uh, what's that 6102 order right like yeah when, right uh, right you know they confiscated the gold can 100 mm-hmm. come back to bitcoin too yeah exactly so uh you know learn from history yeah uh gabe you're leaving tomorrow or tonight to go to el salvador yeah this is huge yeah you're one of those <laughs> you're one of those people that's yeah. picking up everything and you're going out there uh, you know, people from all over the world, Bitcoiners from all over the world are being attracted to El Salvador, uh, you know, for the great weather, uh, you know, the great uh, p- pupusas yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, the Bitcoin country, of course. Yeah. How are you feeling inside, man? Do you have are you nervous? Uh, what's going on inside of you right now? Knowing you're leaving tonight for El Salvador for indefinitely, right? Yeah, um, dude, it's weird. I think my body and my mind kind of just thinks this is just another trip. Um, but I think it'll hit me, you know, in the, the few months in, um, that I don't really want to come back to Canada. Right. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, El Salvador attracts a lot of people due to, uh, you know, a lower cost of living, depending on where you're looking in the country. Uh, for me, the main attraction is Bitcoin, right. And increasing and working with Bitcoin, uh, increasing Bitcoin awareness and education and working with those organizations that are on the same path in the same mission. So um, for me, one of those uh, companies is uh, the Bitcoin hardware store, which is a, right on Bitcoin Beach. And it's a store, kind of like an Apple store, where you can literally go and test all of these gadgets out. Mm-hmm. Um, because if I tell you to go buy a cold card, you might order this thing online and you're like, holy shit, these buttons are so hard to press, right? Or I have to type in letters and there's mm-hmm. no letters on here, right? So, mm-hmm. um, you can, I, can I handle one of those? Yeah, dude. I haven't really played too much with the cold card. I don't know. They're yet. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Everyone posts is like the highest security. Yeah. So due to the, uh, I want to say both of them have a dual secure element. I'm not hundred percent sure, but the, I think the, the, the buttons may be hard to press, but like this feel durable. 100%. Yeah, they're like, very clean. Like it's not something you want to like have to replace. Yeah, like, compared to that, it's a little bit more squishy. Yes. But um, I think the reason CoinKite did that is because of uh, like there's certain softwares out there where they can hear what you're typing on the keyboard. Like each really? key has a different 
tone. Uh, yeah. So, you it's know, it's like dialing you, a phone, like phone number yeah, like back yeah, yeah. in the day. So okay. if you're looking at something like this, like, hmm. you know, if you have malware on your computer yeah. or something, um, whereas that you can't hear anything, yeah. right? These so, companies think of everything, like, everything, like, everything. It's awesome. Yeah. From every angle and like yeah. looking at it from the side and angles like that. 100%. And I guess phones do that too. Screen covers, but yeah. So, wow. so stuff like this, right. And, um, I think again, even to that point, uh, the reason that I'm going down there to help them out is because I think kind of combining the two uh, value propositions of a physical store where you can go and play around with the uh, you know the security devices that are offered. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you're looking into a node. Maybe you want to get a steel plate. You can get all of that stuff there, right? Um, what is best for you, right? And and that's why we're there. Uh, and I think my business as Bitcoin advisor Mm -hmm. can come in as the consultant arm of the Bitcoin hardware store and help people set these up, uh, look for their situations, uh, Mm -hmm. travel. You mentioned, you know, like I just set up a multi-sig with a tap signer, Mm -hmm. which is a hardware wallet with no screen. It's just NFC, um, my iPhone and the cold card, right? So if the TSA is like, Hey, give us your cold card. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, I still have my phone and this would be my wallet and I can extract the funds and move them if I don't have my seed phrase to the cold card. Right. Okay, so there's so cool. many different like situations, scenarios that you mm-hmm. could plan for and give a different solution for. Mm-hmm. Um, but you might not find that answer yourself. Right. So it's good to have someone that you can contact yeah. and ask. Right. Right. doesn't seem like it's a priority right now for them to be seizing hardware wallets at at a border but oh, you they never know don't, they, they probably don't know what it is yet right right so once they figure out looks like a game boy to them or something yeah, maybe, what, yeah once know. they start tracking all of these companies mm-hmm. um you know you might run into okay now they recognize what it is this might be not mm-hmm. be um allowed on a uh, yeah. plane anymore like stuff like that right so i remember back when samsung had the note 7 or something Mm-hmm. where the batteries were exploding like oh yeah the tsa had to be able to identify those phones mm-hmm. to ensure that they did not get on a flight right because they were an actual <laughs> dangerous yeah. security risk mm-hmm. right this is more of a risk for the government and people is <laughs> escaping right uh that oppression or financial right, right? yeah what a risk you yeah, know exactly you know, god forbid we have yeah. access to our money yeah you can uh, literally exit <laughs> you can li- exit with your whole net worth yeah, using a key that looks like this. Right, right. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. is that what you're doing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not just this key. No, it's a, yeah. All right, let's, let's look at the screen for a minute because we got time chain yeah, up dude. here. And we got all these different stats and metrics. Is this? Do you, do you use this website? I know you mentioned, um, what's the other one called? Uh, the other one that I recommend checking out is Bitfeed. Bitfeed dot live yeah dot live and what what are some of the metrics you like to follow in Bitcoin? Um, honestly, I really like Time Chain. Um, I kind of refer back to the mempool a lot just because okay. I, you know, when I'm sending transactions, my wallet software might give me an estimate for the fee, but mm-hmm. I want to cross reference that with other uh, places that also give you an estimate. So, uh, Blue Wallet is actually notorious for this. Every time I send something out of Blue Wallet, mm-hmm. it gives me the complete incorrect and i'm always i would be overpaying um in fees if i go with the fast option of blue wallet so mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. for example right now priority is 19 uh maybe blue wallet if i go to send the transaction right now will give me 25 right for the fast option so you have to uh you know if you know about all of this stuff and know how to mm-hmm. set a manual fee rate uh these things come in handy uh a lot so this is yeah i, I really just look at the fee rate. Um, I don't really use it for anything else. <laughs> it's just a really cool graphic. We have this up in the hardware store uh, yeah. all the time, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to work with Ronnie, which I've had Ronnie on the podcast twice now. Once at his compound that he's living at now, or did he move now? He's in his new Good place. Question. He's, uh, he's in, his, yeah. in his own world over there. He's in his own world for a at. few years. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, when I was there at his place at the time and then and then I had him uh, virtually on not too long ago too, yeah. and you know it's come a long way over there. It's really cool to see. Like when I was there, the the odor, oat side of it wasn't as built up, 
and uh, but the inside they had were pretty much ready to go. Uh, he's got a lot of cool different products there, and yeah, like you amazing, said, it's uh, you know if you guys can get like a lot of locals to start doing self custody, you know the government's really supporting what you guys are doing over there, and and you know give you guys tax breaks for technology companies. Uh, and one thing that I noticed uh, that when he gave me a three sixty tour of the shop last time I, uh, on the virtual podcast I had with him uh, was that K one machine. Man, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Some people maybe not a fan of it, but. I think that you can just throw in your loose change and get Satoshi's into lightning. Yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty damn cool. What are, what are your thoughts around that? <laughs> Dude, I love that yeah. thing. So, you know, if, uh, yeah, I don't remember when I used it, like, cause I never have cash. I just pay for everything yeah. <laughs> in Bitcoin down there. But for some reason I had cash and I'm like, Dude, what do I do with this? And he's like, Dude, there's a, literally a K1 machine here. Yeah. Um, you can use it. And, I don't know if it's it's going to change now, but for purchases, we're only accepting uh, cash or Bitcoin. Uh, when I was there last in in March, um, I think we may be progressing to accepting uh, debit and credit cards just because we want to make sure that people can buy stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but the cool thing was, hey, I don't have Bitcoin, but I really want this hardware wallet and I've got a lot of cash. And we would be like, oh, great, but we don't have the change mm. <laughs> for that, mm-hmm. right? What's the solution here? Well, go buy some Bitcoin. Yeah, oh, give only Bitcoin change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bit- <laughs> only Satoshi's is your change. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Honestly, that could have been one, but yeah. we just don't really want the cash. So <laughs> right. we would say, go to the K1 machine, put in your cash, uh, buy some Bitcoin, and then send us the Bitcoin. Right. right? Super easy. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I love it. I think everyone should go check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, El Salvadoran projects are so innovative mm-hmm. because they can just, like their testing ground is Bitcoin country. Yeah. Right? And that's huge, mm-hmm. right? So you've got things like this, which is a Tianki card. Uh, it's just an NFC card, not like a tap signer. This literally is a custodial platform where you can deposit Bitcoin uh, and check your balance like you would a bank account. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you can use this to pay in lightning invoices. Mm. So I can spin up a lightning invoice, uh, request a certain sad amount and tap the card to pay much like I would a, a debit card. So these projects are all coming out of El Salvador. Yeah. Um, the other one is Dito Banks. It's a okay. MasterCard that you can deposit Bitcoin onto uh, and then you can withdraw from any ATM or pay with a to any credit card terminal uh, using Bitcoin, which is right huge like there's so many developments coming out of that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're all all helping us get away from fiat 100 percent. yeah yeah sometimes you have to integrate um you know fiat rails with with bitcoin like Mm -hmm. uh dito bank says with mastercard but um i i don't think that's a bad thing you know it's kind of just an intermediary step to to help people get more comfortable hey if i have bitcoin can i spend it Mm -hmm. you know not every shop in el salvador accepts bitcoin yet so Again, it, it, it's helping us Bitcoiners mm-hmm. uh, live a more comfortable and stress-free life where we don't mm-hmm. have to get in conflict with every business owner that doesn't accept Bitcoin. Yeah. Right. I think locals seeing Canadians, Americans, people from all over the world coming to their country for this thing called Bitcoin yeah. really puts it on the map for them. And I think that those people there are going to be so much further ahead because and they need that right countries like that need that where you know the average you know i think the construction workers were making 17 bucks a a day when i was there and you know that's obviously a very very low wage for what we're used to here in canada uh obviously more expensive lifestyle here and higher living standard and everything else however um yeah there's people these people need bitcoin uh more than we do probably and it's really great when i when people like you uh, people from all over the world moving there, teaching these people, well, you know, custodial service. Everyone's getting set up to be, you know, financially sovereign. Uh, they're, you know, definitely moving ahead where a lot of people here might just be getting into the ETFs. 100%. I feel like when they see you guys coming there, really like what is going on? Like our country's clearly doing something good if all these people are coming here. Yep. And, you know, it's usually people with, you know, a little bit of a chunk of a Bitcoin too, right? Mm-hmm. So like compared to them, they're they're well off, right? So I think it definitely turns a lot of heads when when guys like you and, you know, all the other people yep. that, have, that have moved there go, to go there. Yeah, to just yeah. spend money and invest money into mm-hmm. this country that was literally the <laughs> world's most dangerous country a little over two yeah. years ago. Yeah. It's wild. Um, mm-hmm. I think... Uh, yeah, especially like seeing foreigners go down there, uh, specifically for Bitcoin and check stuff out. Um, 
one of the coolest things if you're looking to check out El Salvador, you'll make an impact just as a tourist if you go to these uh, Me Premier Bitcoin or My First Bitcoin graduations because the kids that are graduating from this course that's being taught in all public schools in El Salvador mm -hmm. um, are like, what the fuck are all these white people doing here, right? And they're like, whoa, this is a... Uh, Oh, oh we, lost, we lost time chain. That doesn't mean the Bitcoin network is down. It's just the website. <laughs> the Bitcoin network failed us. I'm, I'm kidding. Um, if you want to go down to El Salvador and like see mm -hmm. how Bitcoin is going to grow over the next like 5, 10, 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. um, go to a My First Bitcoin graduation. Okay. So this, uh, this course and this organization is doing uh, great work uh, in every public school in El Salvador. And, you know, they have regular graduations, uh, 14 to 16 year olds are taking a 10 chapter course, they're learning about Bitcoin. And then, um, you know, when they see foreigners show up uh, at their graduation, yeah. uh, it's pretty like mind blowing, right? They're probably oh, yeah. like, what is going on? Yeah, we got time team back. All right. Good. <laughs> All right. See, when we don't care, it right. just works. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When you don't care about the price, it also goes up. See, <laughs> we're up 200 bucks. It's yeah, I'm not pounds. caring. I'm not yeah. caring. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, man, like I, I think um, even if you go down to El Salvador and you're like, ah, I, you know, there's not as much as many businesses as I thought accepting Bitcoin here. It's all about the next generation. And uh, these graduations show you that these kids are being taught about Bitcoin. They're understanding the importance of it. So maybe they'll take over um, their parents' businesses. Maybe they'll build their own businesses. They're seeing these foreigners come in, tourists that they haven't seen um, again since uh, you know, 2022, like there was not really that much tourism around the whole country. Like there is now maybe in the mm -hmm. beach areas, you would see people, uh, touring around, but, um, yeah, tourism is going to be massive now that you have an ultra secure country, mm -hmm. um, that's inviting to everyone. So it's cool. Do you ever go down to El Tunco? Yeah, sometimes if I if I want to party, which uh, <laughs> that's where it's at. I, I'm gonna try to stay away uh, for the next three months. Yeah, uh, we're so close. <laughs> I'm so close. It's so tempting. Um, You're gonna get all these Bitcoiners coming through saying, "Let's go party at El Tunco." <laughs> I know, and I got to take care of the people, right? If you're yeah. a client of the Bitcoin hardware store, yeah, uh, then <laughs> then maybe, <laughs> yeah. But um, <laughs> the Gabe's turning up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It's um, yeah, it's all about just uh, focusing, and, yeah. and grinding for these next. Uh, yeah. Month, so I can build a, a future for mm -hmm. the Salvadoran people, also myself, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, just are you gonna celebrate when Bitcoin gets to 100k? I don't think so. No, you know, are I, you gonna I, celebrate at any price? I don't think so, man. Just gonna go and splash some money around. <laughs> no, uh, that's also why I'm moving to uh, El Salvador. It's like when you go to a, a country where these people don't have these luxuries, mm -hmm. you're much less tempted to buy shiny stuff. Right. So, uh, you know, Ronnie <laughs> doesn't wear shoes, like <laughs> famously, uh, <laughs> John from me premier Bitcoin or my first Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, he loves to not wear shoes and, and it's, it's just such a cool mm. culture mm -hmm. uh, that you can be like so free, um, and have a carefree lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and here we are, you know, worrying about the iPhone 16 and like complaining that it's yeah. the same as the iPhone 15 and mm -hmm. it's like, shut up like, <laughs> go deliver some value to society um and you'll be rewarded uh whether you want to buy shiny yeah. things or not you know it's just about improving your quality of life right mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. the, the truth of the matter is that if the iphone was a foldable or not it's not going to really improve your quality of life right, right? you have to escape uh, mm -hmm. a system that is financially um you know, putting you down mm -hmm. and uh, start delivering value to society I, I think that's the main goal yeah in, in life for sure. And if you're not delivering value to society, at least hold Bitcoin and pump our bags a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> sure, baby. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think if you're not delivering value to society, you're just <laughs> taking value. Um, but hey, all the hodlers out there, yeah. um, keep hodling. Don't, don't sell. Yeah, for I, sure. I don't want sure. my bags to yeah. uh, get devalued either. Gabe, what do you like to do when you're not doing Bitcoin stuff? Jeez. Bitcoin has consumed my life, dude. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Do you exercise? Do you play chess? Do you play video games? Do you run? Do you work out? Dude, no. Um, I literally just, I mean, sometimes, I, uh, yeah. Now that I'm going down to El Salvador, warm climate, I'll go on runs 
uh, yeah. get the mindset, you know, focused, mm-hmm. um, and just work on myself, you know, like mm-hmm. take some time to like self-reflect, read some books. Um, yeah, it's going to be like a reset. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, uh, I've been really lazy over the past you know, few years just cause life's been too comfortable almost. Okay. Uh, you know, when you have a secure job, it's just, you know, way too comfortable. And I, and I see people all around me, um, get too comfortable in that lifestyle and not really push for anything else. So that's mm-hmm. why I'm kind of jumping into the deep end, surrounding myself around people that are builders. Yeah. Um, because you know, we all know that saying, uh, you're the average of the five people that you surround yourself with. Right. And, uh, if you surround yourself around lazy people, you're going to be lazy. Uh, if you surround yourself around hardworking and, uh, hardworking people and entre- entrepreneurs, you're probably going to, um, you know, reap the benefits of their lifestyle also. So um, that's what I want to do right now and just increase my knowledge and, uh, yeah, just get in, in touch with the, the people that need the help. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, yeah, you're going to the right spot to do that. You're going to be with like-minded individuals and other people that are philosophically motivated by Bitcoin. So yeah. I'm really envious of, of what you're doing. Um, you got a you, place to stay, man. Anytime I know. Like and El Salvador's <laughs> not out of the question for me. I am. Uh, I got some travel plans to Asia. I'm going to a music festival in Thailand. Nice. Uh, I'm going to see my college roomie who I haven't seen in many, many years. Right. Uh, so I got some personal plans there, but uh, El Salvador is always in the back of my head. I, I did love it there. It's, you know, beautiful sunsets there I'm at Bitcoin Beach and there's always Bitcoiners coming through. And as a content creator and someone who's interviewing people, it's it's the place to be because every week there's, oh, this guy's from Germany, this guy's from Texas, you know, coming through yep. uh, and, you know, get to get to talk to like-minded people all the time. Um, so you're leaving tonight. We're going to miss you tonight at the Bitcoin, Niagara Bitcoin meetup. You know, it's going to be my last one because I won't be here probably. For, I'm not going to be here for November or December. Oh, wow. So yeah. I'm hopefully we'll have a good time tonight yeah. at, at uh, Riverbank Tavern. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to give out to a shout out to Joe Gonzalez for letting us use his podcast space. Uh, go check out Right Choice Realty in Niagara Region if you're looking to buy or sell a home. Check out Pete's Review Joe. That's his channels where he does uh, pizza reviews all around the area. And nice. uh, go see what the best kind of pizza there is to go try. Um yeah, man. So what's, uh, you know, what's going to be the biggest catalyst this, this, uh, this cycle ETFs, maybe No, the ETFs already happened. Mm-hmm. Um, Scarcity. I think it's, I was going to say education of yeah. financial advisors, but, um, you know, there are some financial advisors that are just so stubborn and they'll never mm-hmm. see the value in Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Um, but you see BlackRock out there literally pitching their Bitcoin ETF to, hundreds and thousands of these financial advisors out there. So um, I think the catalyst is the same catalyst that we've always had is just more demand as people learn more about Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Um, But obviously in the short term, I think the biggest catalyst is going to be the elections. And, uh, Mm. you know, Anthony Pompliano talks about this all the time, but I think he does. I don't know. Someone does. But it doesn't really matter who wins um, because the market hates uncertainty and we're in a really uncertain time where uh sure we can look on poly market and see that <laughs> trump is up 65 percent in the polls right. <laughs> or the the odds for him to win mm-hmm. um but that doesn't really tell us much right you don't know until it's over so i think after november 5th where we get some certainty in where we're going the market will understand um and and i think bitcoin will uh benefit from that certainty, whether it's Kamala or it's Trump, I don't, I yeah. don't think it matters. Yeah, it's uh, political. Bitcoin's politically neutral, although right. it appeals to conservatives and libertarians mm-hmm. more because of that freedom aspect. It's really just a tool, just like the internet is, and everybody right. can benefit from that. And like you said, the uncertainty is is the is the thing that people that the markets don't like. Yep. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter really who gets in. You know, governments tend to print money, whether Republican or, or sorry, conservative or liberal. Uh, it's, it's all goes the same way. We've seen, you know, several major governments switch over throughout the world and their individual nation state policies may change, but you know, there's only so much they can do now. And if they, you know, try to stifle their own people from having Bitcoin or acquiring Bitcoin or having it in self custody, that's only going to hurt their people. Right. So, uh, I think, I think, uh, Bitcoin's almost forcing the hand of governments to adopt 
friendly policy, more friendly policy as time goes by. I could be mistaken depending on what we see in the future, but yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Paul Tudor Jones just went on, uh, I think it was CNBC or some, uh, Andrew Sorkin, he was talking to Andrew Sorkin and uh, he said, you know, inflation is inevitable, mm-hmm. right? So I'm long gold and I'm long Bitcoin. And yeah. this is a legendary investor. He's been in the market for a long time. For him to come out and say that, uh, and if he understands that, mm-hmm. then hopefully that knowledge and understanding of Bitcoin trickles down uh, to people that listen to him. But I don't think, and the reason that I don't tell anyone to just buy Bitcoin is because it's not enough, right? You have to understand it, mm-hmm. right? And if you understand how valuable this asset is, you'll understand that you have to protect it um, mm-hmm. as much as possible. So, uh, you know, if you tell someone to just buy Bitcoin, one of the things that you might do is tell them to just buy an ETF, mm-hmm. right? And that might be cool for them to see the price appreciation over time, mm-hmm. but they don't actually hold Bitcoin, right? So um, maybe if you want to get them interested, great. But if you really want uh, to to pitch them on the value of Bitcoin, everyone's going to get the price they deserve, I think. And it's, uh, yeah, it's not up to us to convince people. What do you think the biggest misconception about Bitcoin is? Still that it can be banned by governments. Yeah, I, I just don't think that you can quickly answer why um, <laughs> governments can't ban Bitcoin mm-hmm. uh, when someone says, ah, China's just going to ban it. Yeah. Because you have to go into, no, these are nodes. Mm-hmm. This is how transactions are confirmed. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a miner. Yeah. This is how the ledger, uh, the rec- <laughs> transactions are recorded onto the ledger. Mm-hmm. Um, no government can stop that. Yeah. Right? But you have to explain both the nodes and the miners to someone yes. that has no idea about Bitcoin. Yes. Um, that is one of the biggest misconceptions. Also that it's um, not an inflation hedge. And uh, again, going off of Anthony Pompliano, whether you like him or not, I think he says some really valuable valuable information, mm-hmm. although he's a shit coiner. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. um, he's got a new book. I saw he does it. have a new book. Yeah. Probably not going to read it. Um, <laughs> I like Bitcoin books. Yeah. Um, by the way, Great Bitcoin book that I'm reading and I'm loving is check your financial privilege, especially okay. for people in the Western world, Europe, all that stuff mm-hmm. where we have infrastructure. It's so hard to show them the value of Bitcoin. I guess going back to your question, what, what's a misconception of Bitcoin? Mm-hmm. It's got no value, right? There's no uh, point to this because we have a robust infrastructure, banking infrastructure. Why mm-hmm. do I need Bitcoin? Well, look at other parts of the world where uh, in El Salvador, before the Bitcoin legal tender law, people had to travel hours on a bus to go pay their electricity bill in <laughs> cash or write a check. That's ridiculous. And now they can do it in the comfort of their own home, instant um, mm-hmm. and cheap. Right? Mm-hmm. They don't have to pay for a bus. They don't have to uh, spend their time and energy. So, yeah, check your financial privilege. Don't buy that iPhone. Uh, and study Bitcoin. So check your financial privilege is is Bitcoin related. Yes, it, gets, it, it is. So shows it, you yeah, it goes through literally the okay. history of Bitcoin, how it was mm-hmm. kind of discovered because it's uh, a compilation of so many different technologies. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it comes to show real life uh, scenarios mm-hmm. happening in Africa, uh, Palestine, okay. and Israel, which is very on topic or on theme right now. Yeah. Um, don't get me canceled. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I, I, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> yeah, just... uh, but yeah, it uh, it just goes back into that, right? Like these are two countries that yeah. are in conflict, and um, Alex Gladstein speaks about um, and and takes firsthand accounts of mm-hmm. people in each country that are in conflict with each other. How does Bitcoin help each country? Right? It's not about how does Bitcoin help them fight each other. It's about how does Bitcoin help them individually within their own countries, right? Because it's such a an empowerment tool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a great book. I highly recommend reading that. Okay, and then you're reading that currently? I am. Okay. Yeah. Like now, do, do you have a favorite Bitcoin book? Okay. The thing that got me like orange pilled aside from all the podcasts was uh, a 100-page book. I think Jimmy Song uh, is one of the authors in it. Okay. Um, it's called The Little Bitcoin Book. Okay. It's 100 pages. All right. Um, and again, one of the things that resonates with me the most is continuously checking your financial privilege, right? So what do I have that people around the world don't have? Mm-hmm. And uh, that's a 100-page book that takes you through scenarios 
uh, of people in Venezuela, Argentina that have been through hyperinflation. Mm -hmm. um, and how does Bitcoin solve these problems and help those mm -hmm. people? Um, after that, if you want to take a deep dive into the technology behind Bitcoin and how it actually works, mm -hmm. but you're really not that technical and you want it simplified, Inventing Bitcoin by Jan Pritzker or Pitzker. That's another 100-page book that goes in th into mm -hmm. all the technicals of Bitcoin, nodes, miners, seed phrases, all that stuff uh, within 100 pages. Super simple terms mm -hmm. and easy to understand. So those two, for someone entering the Bitcoin space, mm -hmm. um, are my go-to. And of course, no, no, no. First one, the My First Bitcoin course. Oh, that, really? That one will okay. actually like cover everything because it's a 10 chapter course. Like that's okay. an actual course. Um, yeah. But if you want to spark curiosity, 100 mm -hmm. page books are amazing. Great, man. Uh, now, I, there's a lot of sometimes inner fighting within the community. You know, you see it on Twitter, you know, new people coming into the space, new people that have big names already. You know, someone that comes to mind that we had on the podcast was, you know, Gary Cardone, you know, people like that, maybe that have money, but and they want to invest in Bitcoin and they're talking about Bitcoin, but maybe they don't practice self-custody or they might have a little bit of Ethereum or some other blockchain project. Uh, but they're mostly talking about Bitcoin, but they don't have they're they're lacking those two aspects. And when you um, talk, mention some of those Bitcoiners there, I know I've heard them have pretty staunch opinions and quite aggressive sometimes. Is there is there a point where, um, you know, people become toxic in this space or, you know, what, what's your read on, on that? Like toxic maxis? Yeah. Attacking you, other. Yeah. Bitcoiners yeah. Is, there, or people is toxic, people? is toxicity in Bitcoin an issue? I don't think so. I think we have to be toxic as long as people don't have their feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the way of the world, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's almost why I advocate for bullying Yeah, <laughs> in, in like elementary schools and high schools. Just yeah. like, don't go too far. Like, right. Be, right. I'm going to, so I'm going to clip that out and it's just going to have your face and it's going to be like, I think we need to be toxic and I advocate <laughs> bullying. And that's going to be the advertisement of this show. <laughs> this, is so this is why I don't do podcasts. Man. This is why I don't do podcasts. Um, no, but honestly, like, uh, we kind of need it. Cause like, there's people that will just look up to people mm -hmm. and just take everything they say at face value, right? So if you like Cold Card and you love NVK, yeah. you'll take everything he says. You might take everything he says at face value. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll be scared from discovering other projects, right? So like I personally uh, love a project called Seed Signer. NVK um, does not necessarily recommend Seed Signer. And okay. uh, goes back and forth with Seed Signer on Twitter all the time. So mm -hmm. if you're a cold card fanatic and you love cold card, which I, I do, it's an amazing product. Um, but Seed Signer has solutions for people elsewhere, right? So, um, you know, and Michael Saylor's getting it right now because he basically said uh, that Bitcoiners at self custody are, uh, I think he said, crypto anarchists. And he uh, recently said this? He, oh, yeah, like two days ago. Wow. So, um, and he's kind of advocating, but he's speaking to like TradFi and almost his verbiage or his tone is, um, disincentivizing people from self custody. Hmm. Right. And we, as a Bitcoiner community that understands that self custody is at the peak of importance, mm -hmm. um, we have to be toxic about that. Right. We have to call out Michael Saylor for those things, but we don't wow. have to like, bully like we don't have to call him names yeah to do so right yeah. we don't have to say michael saylor's a shit coiner or anything mm -hmm. like that it's just yeah i don't think michael he's Saylor a status is correct yeah exactly <laughs> could he be a fed i don't know <laughs> i don't know and it, i don't think anyone should care if anyone's a fed or not because bitcoin is open source matter. protocol self-custody and don't worry about the shit it's all twitter drama mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and we should just stay away from it i think it's all distractions and noise um, which is why I like to attend high signal conferences and talk to high signal, like people that have high, high signal. Things. Yeah. 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 It's good to keep it positive and remove yourself from the toxicity. Um, we're trying to, you know, try to do that as much as I can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's crazy that, that Michael Saylor said that. And yeah. I've been a little bit off Twitter lately because okay. of, you know, some good. of these reasons, but, yeah. um, so Michael Saylor doesn't practice. I mean, he wants to have some in self custody. I feel like he was such a I, he's such a strong, like a well educated Bitcoiner, 
but how do you not practice self custody whatsoever? I, I don't. I don't know if mm-hmm. you know he's he started that podcast to like an hour long podcast mm-hmm. by saying that he has seventeen thousand seven hundred and thirty two Bitcoin. I think uh, that's his total amount of Bitcoin ownership. He, well, he probably has way more than that, but he's like, well, well that's separate. La- that's personal, personally yes, separate from from MicroStrategy. Got you. So he's like, well, the last time I said my balance Mm -hmm. that this is what that was and he probably now understands you should not tell your bitcoin balance to anyone so he's accumulated Mm -hmm. um and that's what he had at the time of making it public last time anyway whether he holds that in self-custody or not i don't know what i do know for sure is that microstrategy does not hold its own keys that's a massive problem whether it's for regulatory reasons or not um because you have a lot of bitcoiners that are now advocating for Hey, if you're going to buy the CTF in a retirement account, you might as well just buy MicroStrategy. I agree with that on the basis that MicroStrategy is a leveraged play on Bitcoin's price. But MicroStrategy not custodying its Bitcoin is pretty scary because, again, Coinbase can rug them or Mm -hmm. 6102 attack. MicroStrategy no longer has Bitcoin. And then the share price plummets. There's so many other factors that a Bitcoin ETF in that scenario is actually a much safer play than MicroStrategy, right? But Hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I I think people are just idolizing Michael Saylor too much. And we have to sometimes call him out for his bullshit. Like he doesn't, another famous thing he said is uh, Bitcoin doesn't have to be a medium of exchange, right? And if we understand the three functions of money, um, medium of exchange has Mm -hmm. to be one of those, Mm -hmm. right? So uh, if we want Bitcoin to succeed, as money, then we should be pushing for some parts of the world that need a mm-hmm. new medium of exchange uh, for the solution to be Bitcoin. Right. So he also said that we can pay our taxes on our Bitcoin. Well, well like a while ago, like he's oh, like yeah, like, like we should pay our capital gains taxes or stuff he, like that. Oh yeah, yeah. There he's very go. like entrenched in the in the current I system, get it. Like he's, and like yeah. that's not something we're going to get away from. Like of course, Dude, uh, he's any a multi billionaire. He yeah. doesn't want to get in, in, in trouble with the government. He's got a right. public company. Um, like, yeah. There's reasons behind. He's going to get John McAfee if, uh, <laughs> if he starts going down that route. He's not that true libertarian anti-tax yeah. Bitcoiner, but he's still very, very educated. I do I do like oh, listening yeah. to him. He's very eloquent when it, when it comes to it. Um, and, and this is the thing is like you have to look for those podcasts where he's challenged mm-hmm. on some of these things mm-hmm. um, because they're awesome, right? So like the... The newest one that came out was uh, him and Safe, uh, Safe Dean. Um, oh yeah, they argued about uh, would leverage exist in a or yeah would loans basically um, and debt exist in a hyper Bitcoinized world? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know Michael Saylor saying yeah 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 obviously he's mm-hmm. using debt to his advantage so you can see where he's coming from right? But my or Safe Dean is saying no. Once we're on a Bitcoin standard. People aren't going to be over leveraged like that. He's saying, like people. I just don't think there's a need for loans. Mm. Not only need, mm-hmm. it's way too expensive. If you want to borrow <laughs> Bitcoin from me, yeah, you're going to pay me like a hundred percent. That's what I'm going to charge you. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I'm giving you my Bitcoin. Yeah, which is that's a, a mistake, right? Infinite, off the get-go. <laughs> or sorry, it, it, it's an, um, it's a definitively scarce asset. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, you want to borrow my car? Right. Right. That's the only car. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, you've got insurance, but let's imagine that that was the only car. It's a one of one car. Yeah. You're going to pay me a heck of a lot of money uh, for that. Right. Right. So mm-hmm. I just don't think it would it would exist on a large scale, maybe mm-hmm. between family members and things like that. Your dad gives you a loan on with his Bitcoin. It, it'd be nice for everybody to just have a positive bank account and like not have to go into debt and use all these legacy financial tools. And we just, 100%. we all just have savings in Bitcoin that grows over time rather than diminishes over time. And you're forced to invest. So I thought, I forget who said that, but like they look at not Bitcoin as an investment because it's just safeguarding your savings. I think it was Adam O'Brien of Bitcoin. Well, now that I think about it, it's more like safeguarding your savings uh, as being posed to force to take your dollars, your fiat dollars and put it somewhere like uh, an investment. Cause if you hold on to it, it's your, it's your melting ice cube. Right. Um, 
we're we're at the 53 minute mark i know okay. you got to race back to toronto <laughs> yeah. and get the hell out of here and go start your new life in el salvador yeah uh what did we miss anything today um maybe i'll just ask you if you have any maybe know. if not final comments and final comments questions or if not just let us know where we can follow you learn more follow your journey into el salvador um yeah no a few comments um you know as i leave canada for a little while is I'm Say bye, woman. mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she cried when she dropped me off. It's oh, fun. no. She's already uh, had her tears. Okay. Um, I, I won't send her this podcast. Um, <laughs> but uh, number one, I just want to congratulate you and what you guys are doing in the Niagara be- um, region because you've got a few businesses onboarded to Bitcoin, uh, which is something that I try to do all the time, uh, which is, again, really cool to, to get Bitcoin to that next stage store of value the medium of exchange mm-hmm. um and we need people uh like you and others to continue spreading that message mm-hmm. uh of why bitcoin is valuable and, and keep pitching it to these businesses um but aside from that i just i hope that canada continues on its path to to look for that bitcoin education when it's so hard to talk about bitcoin mm-hmm. uh here and people are entrenched in that legacy financial system um but I, I just know that there's really smart people, uh, university clubs popping up uh, across the country, and I'm really excited uh, for all that stuff. Awesome, but, man! I yeah. appreciate your words and appreciate you always. You you know you're making the long trips yeah, uh, to come down here and today for the podcast too, man. I love that, and I love that I got to speak to you yeah. on your very last day, of last hours <laughs> yeah. here in Canada, man. Uh, I'll never forget that. So I wish you all the best in El Salvador. Awesome. Uh, most likely see you down there, man, at some point. I hope so. Um, yeah, man. So yeah, thanks, man. So um, work hard, keep your head down, and you know, yeah. you know, have fun out there while you're doing it. You're gonna have, uh, you're gonna meet a lot of cool people. So uh, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. And uh, if you guys need anything in El Salvador, check out my website. You can contact me through there, mm-hmm. uh, BitcoinAdvisors.org. Um, and you can get all the essentials. If you want to learn about Bitcoin, uh, go to the education tab and download the Me Premier Bitcoin uh, mm-hmm. or My First Bitcoin book. Get started. Study Bitcoin. If you need anything, I'm here to help. And on Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, it's all Bitcoin Advisors. BTC Bitcoin Advisors, advisors uh, on Twitter. But yeah, Bitcoin Advisors everywhere. All right. So we do the El Salvadorian fist bump. The, oh, the, the Ron, this is what this is what I don't Ron, even know if I know this, that. Oh, this is what Ronnie said they do out there. They I think they go like this and then end it with a oh. like that. All right.